Well, hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for visiting. Now you're seeing in the title, it's a Eurovision related video. It's a bit weird this year with the pandemic and all that happening. I'm here at home in Malpas in Cheshire in England. While really I should have been, well, while I'm recording, this is the this is the day after the, the grand final of Eurovision when it was in Rotterdam. So I should be hung over right about now, uh, reacting to the winning song who finished last, probably the UK. And of course, making the trip back home, which is the worst feeling ever. I call the Sunday after Eurovision uh, PED, which is post Eurovision depression. I didn't come up with that actually. Uh, it's a it's a thing at Eurovision. It's a community thing. We always say uh, the Sunday after Eurovision is post Eurovision depression. I must get my uh, Nicholas Joseph glasses out. And before I start, and yes, I do, I do like these. They're they're fake, but I think I I love these glasses. Thanks, Nicholas, for giving me these. What I'm going to do is I've decided to rank the top five favourite songs for this year of Eurovision. And here they are. So at first, number one, the favourite song. This is according to Eurovision World when I checked this today. Bulgaria was the favourite. Lithuania uh, in second. Then Switzerland in third. Again, Switzerland. It's been so long since they've won it. I think the last time it was Celine Dion in eight, 1989. Number four, it's Iceland. Now, I have heard this song, and I've seen it a couple of times, and it has been talked about a lot. And Iceland have never won the contest, so it would have been special if they did win it this year. And in fifth, again, they're always up there. It's Russia. Let's react to the songs and rank my top five that I would have thought would have been for this year's song contest. And we're going to start off with Lithuania. The world is my desire. I must admit, I have heard the song a few times already. I just love how upbeat it is. So catchy. You can just tell that it's just very weird people. And he loves lying on the floor. <laughs> I love that. It's brilliant. I think just that dance would have helped it for for the win easily. Yeah, I can't do it. It's like watching the thing from Adam's family crawling up above his head, but with two of them. See, I really like that one. I can see why that was one of the top five favourites. Now, I think when I actually checked the height of this singer from Iceland, it's six foot nine. Jesus, that is tall. I guess if he didn't try out singing, he could have been an Icelandic basketball player. Costumes are so creepy. Just so chilled out, I love it. <laughs> He's got the moves. I think what I like about this is that they switch mics. Not really seen that at Eurovision before. Oh yeah. I, I, I don't even know what they're supposed to be. Are they supposed to be saxophones? Uh, or futuristic saxophones? Doesn't matter. He, he looks like he is a Viking. Maybe that was his past. I'd love to know what the budget was on these costumes. Because look at the print on their shirts. It's not very good, is it? Not that it really matters. Probably a five or a pop. <laughs> it's 
It's the whole switch. It gets a billion. I, I just love it. The staging and everything is perfect. The only problem is, is that again, Iceland have come up with a great song, which could have won the contest, but no, it's not going to be able to be used for next year. It has to be a completely different song, and Iceland have been runners-up in the past twice. Uh, can you imagine Eurovision in Iceland when they host it? I've, I think it'd be awesome. It'd be so different. I can't imagine how cold it would be in the arena, maybe. Uh, do they even have an arena? I have no idea. Someone send a postcard. But no, I love Iceland's song. Will it be my winner? Find out soon. Now let's go to Russia's. <laughs> I still, I've seen this like once or twice now and it's bizarre. I should always make a big effort as well. It's good. Oh God. I can't do that. I bet they've been doing that workout for hours. I just find the women in this really creepy. Yeah. Are you ready? Hold it steady. I mean it is Eurovision. This this is exactly what Eurovision's all about. Just bizarre, makes no sense and would potentially win. I do swim with him. Wait, he has. He could do some moves. He has no limitation. Oh, what's with the lipstick? Tell you what, forget squats. Try and do that. Robotic in this. Yeah, I have no idea again what that song is all about. I have no idea. It's just so bizarre. But that was Russia. And again, Russia in the last few years, their last win was in 2008. Since then, they've been so close with some of their songs, so many memorable songs, and they've just not found the top. We now move on to Switzerland, which was third favourites to win the Eurovision Song Contest. Oh, it's raining. Just like being in Manchester. Non-stop rain. Wondering when the sun will arrive. Maybe they filmed this in Manchester. Well, it's clearly going to be a ballad. Of course, with it being in French, I don't have a clue what it's about. We're just going to catch a cold from rain to petals. Switzerland weather is very weird. <gasps> Doesn't sound too bad. It's now snowing. Not really the kind of song I would vote for. Seriously, he needs to watch it. If he gets a cold ahead of Eurovision, it's still raining in Manchester. Well, I, uh, I mean, I'll share more thoughts in a minute. But it's not normally a song I would vote for, so that might be a bit of a sneak peek of what will be my winning song out of the five. But yeah, that was Switzerland. We now reach our last song, which was, according to Eurovision World, the favourite out of the lot. And it was the bookies' favourite ahead of the night. I must admit, I wouldn't have thought that. 
I've heard this a little bit now and again, the Bulgarian song, but see what you think. Well, at least it's not having any beer. Tears getting sober, not tears getting beer. I'm glad it didn't say that line. Bulgaria have had some good songs over the years, but they still haven't won Eurovision. to ride in Alton Towers. Definitely a hold your candlelight moment. I mean, just again, though, it's another strong performance, whatever you think of the song. Bulgaria just seemed to have a good song each year. Good that they're back. Interesting. To be honest, I would not have voted for that as well. So again, and obviously pick into what my top five will be. You know, again, Bulgaria just they just do it. You know, they 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 turn up. They have a good song. Every song I've seen in the last few years from Bulgaria, I'd, I'd be proud of if I was from Bulgaria and think, yeah, that's that's our song. Uh, especially when I'm from the United Kingdom. <laughs> the songs we've come out with over the last few years have been dreadful. So we've heard from the, the top five countries of this year, according to Eurovision World being the favourites. And as you can see, I've put my glasses back on to, to really give you an insight of what I think of my top five favourites from this year. So... I'm going to go from bottom to top. So from fifth place, I've gone with Switzerland. I, okay, the song is in French, so it's not really fair for me to say that, but it's just not a song I would vote for. It's, you know, it's a ballad song. It sometimes works. It worked for Ukraine in 2016 with Jamala, but I, 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 I'm I, not feeling it with this song. It, it, I, apparently it's about him wondering where he's from, etc. but eh, it doesn't really reach out to me. At number four, it's Russia. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to think of this song. I it, it's kind of catchy. It's kind of it's it's memorable, obviously, with the moves that they make with their legs, for example. But I I find it rather annoying. I know Eurovision songs are known to be that, but that that one in particular, I would not have liked to have seen win. I mean, some people will hate me for saying this, but I was in Lisbon when Netta won with Toy for Israel two years ago, and I just I hated that song. I I couldn't be doing with it. I went to a Euro club nearly pretty much every night throughout my time there and you heard that song all the time it was just getting so annoying and I just know that Russia would have been the same thing in Rotterdam and I just would have hated it at uh, number three it's Bulgaria now I actually I wasn't sure what to think before this song but I actually don't mind it it's not bad I quite like the lyrics to it it's obviously another emotional song about a scar and a wound and everything around it um, and and again, Bulgaria just they, they really do put their effort into their songs, and yeah, it's great. Um, it probably would have been a top five. Number two, and if it had happened, number two, it would have been Iceland again. So if they had finished runners up this year, it would have been the third time they've been runners up, followed by 1999 and 2009. Iceland, oh, I'd love to see them win it, and this song probably could have won it. It's I love it. It's just different. Um, I think you just love the singer, you just love what's going on. The switch to the mics, I think, is fantastic. Never really seen that before at Eurovision. So, you know, with, with so many stage performances over the years, since Eurovision's been around in 1956, you know, you got to think of something different. And that, they really have come up with that one. And the guy's six foot nine. I can't imagine if I interviewed him. So, uh, how do you think you're going to do? <laughs> it would have just been really, really awkward. Uh, but number one, you saw me dancing to it, and you know it meant it. It, it hit me more. 
and that is Lithuania. The song is just awesome. Lith Lithuania, I, I, I can't remember from the top of my head if they've ever won Eurovision, but um, Eva, a couple of years ago in Lisbon, she was up there, she did very well, and they've come back stronger two years later, Lithuania. They've come up with another song, and yeah, this song is just catchy, it's memorable, the dance is absolutely awesome, it's different, that's what I would have gone for as my number one song for Eurovision 2020. So we've come to the end. Thank you very much for watching. I might do some more Eurovision stuff when I can. So thank you for watching. Uh, I would like to know what your thoughts are. What would your top five uh, Eurovision songs of 2020 had been? Do comment below and I'd love to hear from you. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.